Hey everyone, today we're going to be assembling the Tektide R robot tour kit. Alright, so let's start off with what you need to assemble this. First of all, you need a soldering iron because you will need to solder the components out of this board. So that includes this, this button. There will be two buttons with these yellow covers that you'll solder onto here and here. Then you also have to solder on this blue terminal block right here. And then you can just put the green and red button caps over the stop and go buttons respectively. Next up, you need a screwdriver with um, a Phillips head bit. Uh, I'm using the 2.0 bit. And you also need a screwdriver with a flat head bit. And that's just for the terminal block. All right, let's get started with the build. So first of all, Let's just prepare the wheels. So you'll notice that this kit comes with these black wheel hubs. And essentially these Bainbot's wheels, which are really grippy, you find the side with the square edges inside here and you basically just, you put this piece that with the square edges in there. Just like that. So now you notice that you got this, that thing fits in there nicely. Now take the shiny like rough side. So don't take this like top side, this mat. Use the shiny rough side of this piece and put that facing downwards so that it like mates with the top of that piece right there. And it should just click in. Now we have an assembled wheel. Do the same for the other wheel. All right, second assembled wheel. Now let's build the bottom. So the first thing to do is take one of these motors. And let's just talk briefly about these motors. So these are um, DF Robot one to 150 motors and i don't really like them because first of all you'll notice they have a very large gear ratio but it also doesn't seem to be very high quality so there's a lot of static friction like when you try to spin this by hand you'll notice it's pretty difficult like and also just generally like this part is like when i spin you'll notice that it shakes around a lot so in the future i might change this out but for now i'm using this type of motor because it has a really nice um thousand tick per revolution encoder which is very useful for high precision control. All right, so what we need to do is just take one of the wheels, put it on this motor, but with a little bit of space. All right, so I've left a little bit of space between them. Now you take this bottom plate, this bottom piece, and you just slip it in with the wheel centered, like so. And this just slides in from the top, and now you've got the wheel in there and everything. All right, you'll notice that there are actually these two screw holes that I've put in. But the problem with these is that you can actually like put in a screw or nut because of the way this is designed. And that's another problem with this motor is that these screw holes are not oriented very well. And I wish they really changed the, the housing for the motor such that the screws can maybe come in from this size. So that's another reason why I might change it out in the future. All right, so you'll notice that we've got one wheel in. You'll notice that we basically got like an outer ring here and an inner circle here. So take one of these ball bearings and just put it on here. Yep, so now you'll notice that we have a ball bearing constraining the inside of the wheel and this just gives it a ton of stiffness. Like now, that thing is solid. It's not moving around at all. Now we need to hold the wheel in, so and those are two si sizes of screws in this project. Um, there's these big screws and these small screws, right? So these big screws are M4 screws and these small screws are M3 screws. So you're going to use an M3 screw for the wheel. So take an M3 screw, grab a washer, like so. So now we have a washer on the M3 screw. You basically just put the washer with the M3 screw in like that. All right, so you'll notice that we have our bearing right there. Then we have our washer on top, and then we have our screw on top, and that's constraining this, this wheel in all the dimensions. So now this wheel is locked in here. Just do the same for the other side. All right, so now we have both of the wheels in. Next, let's put in these Adafruit caster wheels. So I like these because they're omnidirectional wheels and we have two of them so that this robot can move in forwards and backwards. So take the wheel, 
We're using the thicker M4 screws here now. Put in a screw. Grab one of these small spacers that are small 3D printed spacers. Put it in like that. And then screw it in from the bottom into one of these holes here, like this one, for example. All right, so you see we've got one screw in and we've got this spacer in there. So just put in another screw and spacer. All right, so now we've got the wheel on there with the appropriate spacers. Do the same for the other wheel. All right, so now I've got both of them and you should notice that, let's move everything out of the way. This should start sliding around pretty well. And it should be like, feel solid on the ground. And slide around. And it feels pretty good to me. Yep, so we've got the base of the robot done now. All right, now let's prepare the top plate. So just move this off to the side. Grab your top plate piece. Now take your circuit board, make sure to put it on these shorter standoffs such that your USB-C port is facing outwards. And just put in two screws to hold it in. All right, so even in the future here, you need to have these two wire cables in the board and you need to have these four wire cables in the board. All right, so now I've screwed them in with these four wires. And now just take the wires and slip them through these, this hole and this hole respectively. So now I've slipped them through. Now let's plug it into the base. So you notice that these motors have these two pin ports over here and these four pin ports over here. All right, so you'll notice on the board here, it's labeled ANC2 and ANC1. And on the other side, it's labeled M1 and M2. So you basically need to take the cable, this two pin wire for M2 and this four pin wire for ANC2 and plug it into the same motor. All right, so I've plugged in M2 and ANC2 into, say this part with the dowel is in the front of the robot, then I've plugged in ANC2 and M2 into the left motor. Now plug in M1 and ANC1 into the right motor, and make sure you don't get this wrong because then your wheel, your motor, your vehicle may end up going backwards. All right, so I've plugged in everything and you hopefully shouldn't have your motor wires sticking at the top. That's just because I'm using those long wires. Make sure that the wires are not touching these black parts because if they are, the motor will not be able to spin. So make sure they're staying away from these black parts on the back of the motor. And now you should just put the top plate on. Take one of these thick M4 screws and put it into two of the corners and screw those in. All right, so I use these two screws to screw the top plate in. You should notice that it's starting to look like your final robot. All we need now is just to add the battery pack. So you'll notice that I've already put in four batteries and actually I may change this kit to use five batteries. So if your kit comes with a five battery pack and something that can fit five batteries, just it works the exact same. Now line it up such that these leads are on the same side as this blue terminal block and screw in this battery holder on top of these tall standoffs using two M3 screws. But before you do that, first take these leads and screw them into the terminal. And actually, if you look on the board, notice it says plus on the left side and minus on the right side. So make sure to put red into plus and black into minus because otherwise your board may get damaged. So this is where your flathead screwdriver comes in. All right, so we've got our battery in. Now just screw it in using two M3 screws. All right, so now we've got a battery mount in and your kit is done. Now let's do the self-test. Now let's self-test the robot. First, connect the robot to your computer via USB-C. So notice that the light is red. That just means that the robot is in low battery. 
But guess what? Right now it's powered off of USB, which is why it is on low battery. So next up, let's run the self-test command. So run cargo install rotor, which is R-O-T-O-U-R, -O -O spelled like that. And when you run that, it'll start doing all this stuff, and I'll have further um, directions on my website. But now once you have it installed, you'll see we have executable rotor. Now we can go rotor, rotor self dash test. You'll see now the LED light on this thing turned to bright blue. Just follow these instructions, which means turn on battery power. So take this jumper wire and move it to the on position here. Next, you need to unplug the robot. Yep. And now press the green button to start the self-test. So I'm just gonna set this on the floor and press the green button. First it'll turn left, then it'll turn right. Then it'll move really fast. Finally, you'll notice that either a red or pink light will turn on. So normally the light should be pink, but since the battery is low right now, it will be red. By the way, I'm using these four NIMH rechargeable batteries so that I will charge these after this video. Now you'll notice that um, when you see this, you're ready to press the green button. So press the green button and the robot will move 10,000 ticks. All right, so I think there's a bug in the code right now, but you can just, but yours should probably just go a fixed distance like that. Although it should look a lot smoother, like a trapezoidal motion profile. So just measure how far it's gone. And essentially now, now if you run row tour config, you'll see that one of the numbers here is ticks per cm. So you basically just take 10,000 and divide it by the number of centimeters it went to get the number of ticks per cm. And you just do dash dash ticks per cm. And then you would put in, for example, 84.6 and hit enter, right? So now you'll see it's over there. You may also need to plug your robot in to do this. So I found that it's about 84.6. So unless yours, yours is wildly different than this, um, it should be 84.6 on your robot too, since you're using the same motors and wheels as me. And if it isn't, probably contact me because there's most likely something wrong with your robot. All right, so now, Let's put in our first path. So here's a path I made. Let's go over what we have. So first of all, go into your VS Code extension marketplace and I'll have further uh, information for this. Search up Rotor, right? Same name as this. And install this extension by NV7. And that way you will have syntax highlighting. Like you'll see that this is highlighted and this is comment and these are numbers and stuff you will have syntax highlighting for all your Rotor code. So it's pretty simple, actually. You can imagine the field as just a grid of tiles, right? So you start out on the start over here, and you move to the center of the square first, which is up 0 0.5. Then in this case, I wanna go, um, imagine there's like walls on this field, right? So in my hypothetical path, I would wanna go from this tile over here to this tile over here, right? So that, that would mean that we're going up one and then we're going left. So now we have left one. And then for the rest of my path, I have just the rest of the path. And on the website, there will be a blog post on how you can do this. So make sure to read that blog post. That'll be linked in the description of their product page. We will have a template that'll basically let you draw out your path and visualize it in competition. Finally, there's time 100. So this is the time in seconds that you want the program to run for. So this is one minute and 40 seconds, which is actually quite a bit higher than the, um, what a competition would have. I believe most competitions have the robot going for about 60 seconds. But um, this is just some test path that I've made up right now. So plug your robot in and run row Rotor, run, and you put the name of the file. For example, Ivern is a.rotor. 
So a dot row tour. And know that in competitions, you need to like impound your code on a USB flash drive. So essentially just save this row tour file onto a USB um, flash drive that I you would plug into your computer with your USB-C cable, for example. And that way you can have it impounded to follow the rules. So you're on row tour, run it on row tour. So when I run this, you should see the LED lights change color. Yep, so it changed from red to blue back to red. And if you had it on, it would probably be white. So I think you'll notice is that this is the path that it actually generates. So it takes these like up, down, left turns and it actually creates like movements in terms of ticks and it creates turns and it uh, accounts for the track width of the robot and all that. And it, in the end, it creates a path with a planned velocity. And I found that um, keeping it around like 1000 to 1500 is mostly ideal. If you get out of this range, the robot might try to move too slowly or too quickly. So try to make sure that the length of your path works out so that this is your approximate velocity, like 1000 to 1500, maybe 2000. So one thing that we haven't done in this tutorial is put a wooden dowel into this. So basically you just take a quarter inch wooden dowel that will come with a kit. You put it in this hole and this hole and make sure it's close to the ground. And then you take an M3 screw and you put it from this hole and screw it in from the side so that it goes into the wooden dowel. You take another screw, you do the same into this hole on the other side, and that way that'll hold the wooden dowel in. Okay, so make sure not to forget to put in the wooden dowel. Right now I don't have one on me, so which is why I'm testing you with that. Now, just you'll notice that these wheels can wobble around, right? So just move them as far forwards as you can. And this is another problem with these motors that I don't really like. And do the same for the other wheel. Now line this up with um, a starting point. Like I'm just using the aim, but use something more precise in the real competition, obviously. And just press the green button. And you'll notice that this LED is red, which means that I really need to charge these batteries. So this might not work correctly. Yeah, so you'll notice that it's not um, moving very correctly, but in general, you'll see that it is, it is following a path. Yep, so I'll have more uh, information on how to program your own over on the website. So thanks for getting the Tektet R robot tour kit. Make sure to put in your wooden dowel in the front, otherwise this will not be competition legal. And uh, make sure to make good programs, pay attention to the velocity, and good luck.